Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name's Joe. Today I wanted to take a look at a game from Downey Games. Now I've done some stuff with Play Games, obviously. That's probably, no, no, not probably. That's my favorite uh, sports board game publisher by far. Um, just the breadth of covering various sports and the games are all unique and well designed and just a lot of fun to play and very narrative. Um, so I enjoy that. So Downey, on the other hand, is more traditional in terms of how um, maybe it's a little bit less narrative and more about you know stats and so on which is fine because we all love stats or we wouldn't probably be playing these games in the first place but um, I recently did some videos or one video I guess on face to the mat which is of course a play game and I'm going to do the, a wrestling game called ultra quick wrestling from Downey Games, which is kind of an alternate approach, but it does have some storyline stuff to it. It's a little, um, there, it, it's, it's in a similar vein, I would say, but it's much quicker in terms of resolving matches. And so some people might like it, some people might not. Um, I'll get into the why I'm, why I'm doing this and so on later, later on, perhaps in the video. If not, I'll talk about it at some point in the not too distant future. But I did want to kind of go through this game really quick and show you what it's about and how quickly you can do things in it. Um, not that face to the mat takes takes a long time to do, you know, a card at all. It does not. Um, but you know, in, there may be times where you might want to kind of do some mixing and matching. And in the case of ultra quick ultra quick wrestling, it uses real wrestlers. So when, when you buy the game, you have the option of buying the 1991 set along with the game parts that you need. And it's all ebook. So you buy it online, uh, download the PDF, print the stuff out. So you can take it to a Staples or something and have them print it for you. You could print it yourself, whatever you want. Um, but they have various sets, a lot of uh, from, you know, more recent stuff to back to like the 50s. Uh, I actually think the earliest one starts in like 47 and they have different results uh, because it's the same kind of thing as play games where you roll on charts and it gives you some narrative element of what happened because it's not hold by hold um, although they they also have a hold by hold game called uh, TV Pro Wrestling um, which I do not have but they that one is that gives you the hold by hold you know throughout the match so you can go with your more traditional long play thing. So there are actually a couple games from Downey that I will probably show here on the channel in the not too distant future. This one, Ultra Quick Wrestling, and they also have a golf game, which I think is very good, called Player of the Game Golf. That is, I'm again going to contrast that a bit with the History Maker Golf from Play Games, um, because it does the same thing. It'll give you a tournament in a very reasonable amount of time, even faster than what play does theoretically. It, it's, it's close because of how play kind of um, abstracts the first few rounds of the tournament and basically you just play Sunday. Um, so it, we'll get into that in a separate video. That's gonna be a totally different video. But in this video, we're going to look at the, uh, the Downey Games Ultra Quick Wrestling I have the 1970s Eastern Territory set along with the 91 set. So we're going to probably look at the 70s one so we have kind of an apples to apples comparison because I did use the 1970s set with uh, uh, Face to the Mat. Of course, Face to the Mat is completely fictional and Ultra Quick is, they do have a fictional set but it's more modern toned. So this is, um, this is going to have its own, like I said, special charts for the 70s when wrestling was less theatrical maybe than it is now um certainly less theatrical than it is now let's put it that way and this was you know back before everything was revealed that it was you know entertainment and so on and so forth this is you know back when uh, kfab was still in effect so so let's take a look at the game and we can go over how everything works and so on and so forth so you can see um, maybe the, draw your own conclusions about whether this might be something that you'd be interested in. And again, if you like real wrestlers, you can obviously grab this and um, 
you can also rate your own. The rating system is um, fairly transparent in what they do. So, and if it's a fictional set, you can do whatever you want and make whoever you want. Like, you could probably take the play uh, Face to the Mac people and transition them into the, the Downey game. And you can obviously rate real wrestlers for Face to the Mat as well. So, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into gameplay and taking a look at how this game works. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to look at the wrestler uh, information. This is the wrestler card. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to point out, um, well, there's a couple things. Here we have the year, the wrestler, uh, the year of the set, basically. So this is the 91 set. You have the overall rating, which is the begin it says beginning overall rating because you adjust it in the match. So, and the, the adjustments have a random element to it as well. So you're never going to have the same, you can have the two same wrestlers rest, wrestle multiple times. And while it's not impossible to have the same modifiers, of course, um, it, it gives you a good chance of having some variety in how the, how the match plays out. Um, then you have various, uh, well, you have his name, of course, his persona. So you'll have heel or face. You have uh, the bonuses for various types or skills. So you have size, speed, strength, savvy, cheating, tech, which is just technical ability, as you can see over here. Cage match bonus, object match bonus. So these are various types of matches, right? Tag team, table match, ladder, uh, brawling, rumble, etc. Right, and then his heat rating, which um, you can kind of look at heat rating, kind of like the TV grades in Face to the Mat, where higher is better. And in this game, it runs from one to ten. So obviously, you would want to have. Uh, well, you may not necessarily want to have, but the higher the heat, the better the chance that something is going to happen. If you have two wrestlers in a match that both have very high heat, say they both are ten then you're going to have the, the maximum there is 20. That affects things that will happen pre-match, in-match, and even possibly post-match. So, like I said, there is a storyline element to this game, much as, much as we saw with Face to the Mat. It's just a different approach to it. Okay, here we go. So, <clears throat> you have your score sheet here. I've laid out four matches. We have three regular matches and a tag team match. So the first match will be Ray Stevens, who will be the face. And you always have to have a face and a heel, just like in uh, other wrestling games. Even if it's a face versus a face or heel versus heel, one has to be the face, one has to be the heel for the match. So Ray Stevens is our face. Bobby Shane is our heel. They all have overall ratings, which is based on their cards here. We saw this when we just looked back at Ric Flair's 1991 card a little bit ago. One caveat with this particular set, the Eastern Territory 73, <clears throat> there are all the wrestlers in here are rated within the Eastern Federation and as, as they performed in 73. So there will be guys that are young maybe that will develop into superstars later. Um, everything's rated as they performed that year in 73. So you might... Uh, if you get this set, you might look at somebody and say, hey, he's underrated or overrated or whatever, but it's based on who was being put over in 73, how they performed in 73, etc. Okay, so we have Ray Stevens. His finisher is Bombs Away, and Bobby Shane's finisher is the Reverse Cradle. They all have ratings. I won't go over those. We kind of talked about them earlier, but the main thing to remember is the 2380 and 16 can and then their heat ratings if we lose use advanced the advanced rules which i probably won't use for this one we'll just keep it pretty simple and straightforward and then uh, as we go on and i do more videos perhaps we'll talk about the advanced rules so this is going to be a pretty basic run through here the other thing is the charts now the charts for this set are a little different from what you get in the base game because it's more tailored towards 1970s wrestling when things were a lot less theatrical and over the top than they became later on. So the first thing we have to do is figure out our match modifier. So we roll on this chart right here and you can see match modifier, you roll your d10, so let's roll a d10 here, and we get a 7 and a 7 is technical. So we look at our technical rating for both guys. Steven's tech is a plus 10, 
Chains is also a plus 10. So I'm just going to put plus 10, plus 10. Okay. Then we do our pre-match. And again, we roll a D10. And we get a 6. And a 6 is none. So there's no pre-match adjustments. 10 and 10. I probably was supposed to actually write in here this was um, cat. And we have nothing here. And so we have no event or adjustment. And our final overall is 2390 and 1620. And we have to do some math. Our difference is 770. So I'm just going to put 770 up here. Now you look at your result chart and you find where 770 falls and it falls right in here. So we're going to roll basically a D100. So we'll roll out two D10s. We'll use the six, the, the six, the black as our tens column and the white as our ones column. A one to 65 means the higher rated wins, which in this case is Stevens. The uh, 66 to 92 would be a Bobby Shane victory. 93 to 100, and we'd have a, a uh, another, an other result rather, and then we would go to one of the other charts based on that and figure that out. So we get a 95. So just like that, we actually have an other result on chart B. Oh, I read that wrong. I'm sorry. So... It's the other result. The chart B is for the the well, how the how the match was won, and I'll I'll show you that in a moment. So our other results are down here at the bottom, and we'll roll here, and we get a seventy three, which is a time limit draw. So the time a time limit draw. So uh, wrestler wrestling matches back in the uh, I'm gonna write time limit draw. And to get to continue what I was just saying, back in the 70s, the matches tended to be longer. There were a lot more draws. There were a lot more like blood stoppages and things like that. Um, so in this case, we have a draw. So neither Stevens nor Shane picks up the victory. We move on to our second match, which is Pedro Morales as our face. He's a 2950, so he's really good. And he's taking on King Curtis Iokea. Or Iokea. Iokea. Not sure about how to pronounce his name. Um, I was a little, little kid in 1973. Um, so Pedro Morales, we repeat, the, we repeat the process. So we start with rolling for our match modifier, and we get a six, which is normal. So normal means that we don't get any adjustments. So we get uh, normal, I'll just write norm, we'll put a zero in here. Now we'll roll for the pre-match and we get a nine and a nine on pre-match is heal. So you have here a, a pre-match event chart and you have heal and face, right? So we're looking at the heal chart here. So I'm gonna roll two dice again and we get a an 11. So 11 is Face stops attack with chair and uses it minus 200 overall this match. All right. So basically, I guess King Curtis tried to use a chair on Pedro. Pedro uh, took it and hit him with it. And so he's going to get a minus 200 to his score. And we'll put a minus 200 here. A zero. So Pedro Morales is a 2950. And uh, King Curtis is a 1350. And that is a difference of 1600. So this is a pretty uneven match here. And so now we'll roll for our normal match results. We get an 03. So here's our chart again. We have a difference of, what did I say, 1600? Yeah, 1600. And 03 is obviously a rated, uh, of higher rated wins. So we have a winner for Morales, and now we roll to figure out what the win is. The chart for that is chart 
B. So here's our wind charts, and you have face wind B. So we roll here on this chart now. And we get a 16, and a 16 is clean pin fall via finisher. So we put a win here, uh, put a PF for pinfall, um, and it's a clean pinfall. All right, and that's our second match. So you can see the game pr progresses pretty quickly. Now our third one is a uh, tag team match. So this is going to be something a little different, and I'll show you what this does here in a second. So we have Chief J Strongbow and Sonny King, and they're taking on Mr. Fuji and Professor Toru Tanaka. So you add them together, okay, in terms of their overalls. So this is gonna be 2560 plus 1250 is uh, 3810 for these guys. So I'm just gonna actually write a 3810 up here so I know it. And then they're gonna be 2120 plus 2115 is 4235. I'll write down at the very bottom, 4235. Okay, and then you're going to add their tags together. So Strongbow and King are a plus 500, and Fuji and Tanaka are a plus 400. So let's, let's go through the process here. We'll roll our match modifier first. We get a 5, which is cheating. So put cheat here. And I'm also going to put tag because I'm going to add them together. So the cheating is 0 and 10 for Strongbow and King, and they get a plus 500. So I'm going to put 510 in here. And Fuji uh, and Tanaka get a plus 75 for cheating and a 400. So they get a 475. And so that would give, well, we'll figure out the, f the final total here in a second. We'll roll for pre match now. Fifth, um, oops, we'll use the black. Five is heal. So we will again use our heal pre-match event chart, and we'll roll again. And we get a 14 this time, and that is number four face interrupts promo minus one heat level. So we're not using heat level, and I didn't rank, uh, the, I didn't rank heels and faces. So when you're running a federation, you rank your heels and your faces, one through six, I think it is. And then you'll be able to use them in storyline events. So we're just going to put no no event because all it did was impact heat level, and we're not using heat right now either. So obviously that's a storyline element. It's an advanced rule, and it's something that adds obviously to the game. But we're keeping things real simple. I just want to show you gameplay in this one, and then we'll uh, address the more advanced stuff sometime later down the road. Because there's also managers and there's a lot of storyline elements that we probably won't really see very much in this particular game. All right, so now we've got uh, nothing here. So we'll just put nothing. And then we'll add up our final adjustments. So they're 4320. And they are uh, 4235, 4320. 710, I think, is what that adds up to. So the their advantage is 390. So they are 390. So now we'll roll for our result. And we got a 50. And the difference is here. So 50 is the high-rated wins. So Tanaka and Fuji defeat Strongbow and King. And that goes to chart A. So we have heel win A. So we roll again. And we get an 86, and that is post-match action. So we get to see some another, another chart now. And so we have post-match events. And we get a 96, which is really high. Face snaps after match and brutally beats heel. So let's figure out which one it is. So I'm going to roll, um, we'll roll We'll roll both dice, and the black will be uh, Strongbow and King, and the white will be Fuji and Tanaka. And one through five will be Chief, will be, will be Strongbow or Fuji, and six through ten will be King or Tanaka. 
So we get two fours, which means Strongbow beats down Fuji after the match. I'm just going to put that they won by, by, I don't know, pinfall, I guess. But that's the thing with this game, just as is with face to, to the mat. You can kind of make your make it up yourself if you wish. And so we're going to put here Strongbow beats on Fuji post-match. And then you could add some heat or something if you wanted to, etc. Because again, this is your own thing that you've got going here. So you can do what you want, which is really cool. All right, and our main event is our champion, Bruno Sammartino, taking on Moondog Main. So this, this is pretty heavily favored in Sammartino's uh, favor. So we will roll here for our match modifier, and we get a 10, or 0, which is size. So we get size. So Bruno gets a 10, and Moondog gets a 0 for that. Now we roll pre-match, and we get an 8, and our pre-match 8 is face, so that's San Martino. So now we'll roll on our pre face pre-match chart, and we get a 0-3. Sneak attack by heel backfires, plus 1 overall this match. All right, so we got face, sneak attack by main. So we've got 29, 10, 30, 10 for San Martino and 15, 30 for Maine. It's a difference of 480. So now we'll roll on our chart here, 03. So that's going to be a win for San Martino because he's got a 15, what did I say that was? 1480. So he's in this one, which gave him an 88% chance of win. And we're on chart B. So we will look at chart B for face win here. 26 is a clean fall, clean pinfall via finisher. So we'll give him the win via, oh, I didn't put this down. This was 1480 pinfall. That's it. We've played an entire match uh, an entire card rather so you can see how the game plays that is the entirety of it basically there are like the post-match events and things that'll give you extra you know extra flair extra events and so on and so forth that are obviously add value to the game you do have manager cards uh, this is what a manager card looks like so we have grand wizard we have captain lou albano which i'm sure most people know who he is uh he had a he was fairly popular in the 80s with the whole um cindy lauper and hulk hogan and all that stuff that went on in uh in the 80s mr p all that all that stuff so um that's going to do it for this video i do appreciate you guys watching as always i do want to thank you for that uh, please feel free to comment ask questions etc i'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible um so yeah, that's it uh, for now. Please like, share, and or subscribe if you would. That would be awesome. But for now, I'm Joe. This has been the sports edition of Hexed Encountered. And until next time, as always, happy gaming.